Hello, my beautiful spiritual rebel friends. Oh my goodness, I love doing these heavenly help desks. Um, it's really, really fun for me to to know what you guys have for questions and to be able to answer them. And I really appreciate you sending them in because you might feel like it's just a question that you have, um, but I think it really helps a lot of people because somebody else might have had that question or they might not have even realized they had that question. And so when you ask, you help everyone. And it also helps me to understand what kind of information you guys want and what you're looking for. So. Let's just jump right in. Let me start answering these questions. We got quite a few that came in this month, so I want to get to all of them for you. Um, and if you have a question now, if you're here live, ask it. Um, I'm happy to, to answer um, that for you. I, I love doing this. I, I like being put on the spot to answer questions, which probably seems very strange, but <laughs> I do. Um, all right, so the first question that came in um, is what makes a number an angel number? Great question. Okay, so the answer to this is basically how you feel. Hey, Maureen. Hey, Susan. It's basically how you feel when you see the number. Um, if it is a sign from angels, a couple of things will kind of happen and, and you'll experience. So the first way that you know is... Um, I kind of describe it as like your energy kind of zeroes in on the number in a different way than if you just happen to notice it. So if you're driving down the highway, for example, and there's lots of license plates everywhere, all over the place, right? And there are numbers everywhere, but you happen to zero in and look right at a license plate that says like 222. That would be a sign because your your whole energy field went whoop and focused on it. Angels can do that. Angels can direct your focus places. Um, so when you have that sort of a feeling, that would be an angel number. Um, it would be it's an angel number if it's um, answering a question or being a message from your angels, and you know by the way you react to it. Um, angels don't drum up a lot of emotion for you. You might react afterwards, um, usually in a good way, like usually like, oh my God, look at how special I am that the angels are doing all of this. Um, so, hey Megan, she said, I sent Aspen a text about all of this this month. Good, well, so here we go, answering it for you. So you know based on how you feel when you see it. Now, if you need more concrete evidence, um, I would tell you to start to work with your angels to get a confirmation sign that's a physical sign in your body to understand if something is guidance or if something is just uh, something your ego or your brain created or you trying to make an answer happen that you want because we, we definitely do that to ourselves. <laughs> okay. Um, so what you can do, how you do that is you say to your angels, you sometimes you have to practice this before you really get what it is. You ask your angels for a physical sign that what you're getting is guidance and you want to narrow in on one physical sign. They'll, they'll, they'll make a signal to you in your body um, that you know every time you get it is your angels confirming to you that that was something sent to you by them or something that they approve or something that they support or a yes or that's right, good job, go in that direction. For me, I get a sort of like a little bit of a pressure-y feeling, it doesn't hurt, behind my eyes, almost like I'm going to cry. Um, but I, I typically don't. Sometimes my eyes will water, but it's a different sensation than crying. There is not a lot of emotion behind it. It's just much more of like a, a sensation. It's right where my third eye is, so that makes sense. Um, and so when I feel that specific feeling, it's a confirmation. So if let's say, for example, I saw a number and I was like, is that an angel number? And I asked and I didn't feel that feeling. I'd be like, okay, no, that, that I didn't, I didn't quite understand that sign. Um, if I did feel that feeling, then that would be my angels confirming like, yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yes, do that. Right. Yes. Good. Got it? So you just want to practice. Do You can do that in meditation where you just ask for that sign and you, you want to do it a few times until the same feeling in your body repeats itself. Some people will get a tingly feeling. A lot of angels communicate through your hands, especially if you're someone who does Reiki or other energy healing, you might feel it there. You might feel a tingling on the top of your head or a slight pressure or almost like someone's put their hand on your head or on, on your shoulders. Those are all very common signs. Feet, tingly feet can be one as well. But just try to look for that. 
Um, the thing that I tell most people when they worry about this is if you think it's a sign, it probably is. Nine times out of ten, it is it is a sign. All right. Now, what you take it to mean is where we screw it up and we make a mistake. <laughs> so if you, let's say you were asked out by a very handsome man and you asked the angels for a sign if you should go on this date and the angels give you a sign to go on this date and you take the sign to mean that you're going to marry this man and you should propose marriage on that exact first date because you got that feeling when you asked if you should go on the date, right? Like we trip up the information that way. Um, and so if you're doubting it, ask a friend or me or, or someone that you know that's also in tune spiritually if they are, if they could try to receive that sign for you as well. So if you keep seeing the number two or the number three or six or whatever you keep seeing somewhere and you're looking it up and you see the meaning but you're not totally sure, ask somebody be like, I, I keep seeing a number and I'm having trouble knowing if this is guidance or not. Would you just do me a favor and see if you notice any numbers for me and someone else can do that for you as well, okay? Megan said, this is everything that happened to me. I saw 222, 444, and 666 all within 15 seconds on different things this morning while driving right after the Reiki license plate lady cut me off. Uh, yes. So, and that's a great point too, Megan. Sometimes there's like too many numbers and you're like, whoa, like which, which one are you saying? What, what's happening? Try to, when it's confusing, try to pull yourself out of solving what the messages are and just start recording them. Because what happens is when you pull yourself out of that mode, you pull yourself back out of ego and it, they become a lot clearer. So imagine like, all right, well, I'm seeing a lot of numbers today. They're not making a ton of sense. So I'm just going to record what they are and let the angels know I'm paying attention and I'm appreciative of what they're saying and I'm, I'm getting them and I'm not going to try to solve them until later. Later, I will ask for some guidance on what they mean. Okay, and then you can ask your angels or you can ask another person to help you sort through that. But that's how I would do that. So awesome question to whoever sent that in. All right, so the next question. Um, so this question came in. It came in very long and it had a lot of very specific details in it. So I don't want to read all of it to respect privacy. But what the question basically is, is um, when... The person asking the question was little. They saw um, spirits and they would say they saw them in the clouds and that they knew it was a friend that had passed. Um, and so what they were asking is, how come I could see it then? And then I kind of blocked it out and now I can see it again. Um, and so let me get to the end. It says, was I blocking up my gift early on because of something that happened? I've always been afraid um, to ask about the situation for some reason. It comes to my brain because it felt like the clearest thing I've ever seen as a child. Can spirit come to you in multiple areas or just on ground eye level? Okay, so here I'm going to answer this in a bunch of different ways because the question involves a bunch of different questions. <laughs> but I, I love the question and I, I appreciate it being sent in. So um, as a child, you are much more able to sense and, and interpret and feel energy, whether it's spirit energy or angel energy or energy of other people. Um, with your outside senses. So your outside senses are your physical senses. So your, your sight, your sense of smell, touch, hearing, all that good stuff, feeling, um, all of that is your outward physical senses. And those are more in tune still with energy and intuitive information when you are a child. There's a lot of different information on why that starts to fade out as we get older, but the best, most simplest thing that I can say to you is that your ego is not very developed when you are um, a child. Your ego takes a while to develop and, and step into power. Think about a baby. They're working 100% on intuition, right? Like they're intuitively feeling a need to eat or intuitively feeling a need to sleep. They're intuitively responding to their mom. Like that, that's completely what you do as a child when you're when you're three years old, you're you're only going based on how you feel and you're not worrying about what other people think or if you're safe all the time, right? So you're because your intuition is in power at that time, it's much easier to to use it and to have your outer senses be in tune with energy of any kind, spirits, angels, whatever, 
Okay. Now, as you get older, your ego develops. And as you become an adult and in how we're designed to become more and more independent, our ego gains more power. And then of course, in our culture, ego is very celebrated. So we become more, we give most of our power over to our ego instead of keeping it in intuition while developing our ego. Okay. So that's why children um, can see that stuff much better. Okay, and so that's why when you were a kid, you probably saw a spirit with your eyeballs, with these. You maybe heard words um, that smelled something like that wasn't there, right? Like your grandfather's cigar or something, and, and he's passed. Um, was that a real ding? Oh, I didn't hear the ding. It could be. I don't. It's something to do on the computer. I'm not sure why it happens, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's it's a ding from spirits because I'm talking about them, right? We'll just we'll just say it is. So that's why you can see those things clearer through these outward senses when you're a kid. When you're older, there's always a trigger because we do choose to turn that off because we decide that it's not safe or um, it, basically we decide it's not safe. And it's usually because outward sources make us feel like there's something wrong with that gift or that it could be dangerous or that it's going to hurt somebody. All right. Um, it's not taught in our culture to celebrate and deal and develop intuition and, and reading energy. That's not something that we do. So we sort of end up moving away from that and it makes us feel as if we're different or there's something wrong with us as kids. So we stop developing that. We, we shift out of that and we kind of turn it off. We're like, no, I don't want any of that. Um, and then, and, and when we're in a place of your ego developing, looking at the way that your brain works as it develops as you get older, it makes sense that that stuff would stop having such a channel. And then usually there's a catalyst in your life that makes that those intuitive things come back with, with great strength. For me, it was becoming a mom because you have to use intuition so much when you're a mother, uh, especially when you have a baby who can't speak to you, right? So I kind of tapped back in intuitively for that. And then it was almost impossible for me to not be slammed by all my intuitive gifts that I had worked so hard to ignore for so long. Uh, other catalysts can just be like really difficult situations in your life where um, your ego loses power simply because uh, a worse fear has come true or you realize that um, the stories that your ego had created are not going to serve you anymore, just depending on what happens. And then they come back in. But at this point, when you're, a, you're an adult, you have to start developing your psychic senses, which live deep deeper inside of you. So for example, instead of seeing somebody in the clouds, like a message from a spirit or words or anything that you would have seen when you were a child, you would now inside your head picture clouds and then see something there. So, and it would be much more symbolic. Um, visual messages come in in the same place where your imagination lives and that's on purpose. And that's a, that's a topic for a whole other, <laughs> whole other video, but that, that it's that same concept. You hear things inside, um, with your inner sense of, of hearing. So developing that can also help. So you can, as an adult, you can also see stuff, hear stuff outside and in inside, and it can come in many, many different ways. So I hope that answers your question, um, enough. Uh, or your questions, but that was a great question. All right, let's see if get another one here. It says, um, I need to know the choice I made was right. I left my three cats because I had to, I had to leave my cheating less than a man. I need to know if what I did was best. Okay. So the, you don't ever, let me, I, I love this question. I, I love it with, with a passion that I can't even describe because I like being asked this because another person can't ever tell you if you made the right decision. I don't care how intuitive they are, okay? Ever, 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 never. Only you know that inside of you. So what happens, and by the way, I do think you made the right decision because you made it in, in, in the way you asked me the question. I can tell, I can tell that you are just struggling with the ego um, coming back in and making you feel guilty. So here's how to know if you made the right decision. If the fears that are surrounding the this decision that's gone by, that you're like, was that the right decision or not? If the fears that are surrounding that have to do with you being a terrible, lesser, not worthy of love person, then that is your ego and that is none of that is true, all made up, okay? If your fears are more concrete, 
If your fears are about not feeling emotionally healthy, if your feel, fear is that you won't be able to achieve an emotion that you achieved then, then that fear is worth looking at. So it doesn't mean you made a bad decision. I don't think that it's possible to make an absolutely wrong, terrible decision as long as you learn from something. And I think if it was painful for you to leave your cats behind, but you did it anyways for the good of yourself and, and, and for, um, what was the wording you used? less of a man, <laughs> um, then, then you did the right thing. In our culture, women especially are taught that if you do anything for yourself, if you're not martyring who you are and, and your soul and your own things, that you're doing something selfish and wrong. And I hate that with a passion. So I think you did the right thing. Work on coming to peace with that and work on solutions and action you can take in front of you that will help bring you more peace and good things. Okay. Um, let's see. I think I've got uh, a couple more here. Uh, I'm not sure if this has been asked before, but I get stuck on ego versus divine guidance. How can you tell the difference between the two? I question everything that I get because I don't know if it's coming from my own ego or if it is really the guidance I am requesting. Great question. I, I get asked this a lot and I'm happy to answer it as many times as I'm asked it. This is important information to know, and I wish I could just catch every kid at like age six and teach them this right now. <laughs> if you have a six-year-old, tell them. Um, intuition comes to you. It answers first. It answers quietly, and it, there's a truth to it. It doesn't trigger emotion. Um, you know it's true right away, and then your ego responds to that. So your intuition doesn't repeat itself over and over again. It's just there, and it's a truth, and it's quiet, and it shows up, and then there is no emotional trigger, okay? Your ego then responds to what your intuition has said. So your ego, your intuition's job is to make you happy and your ego's job is to keep you safe. So your ego is responding to what your intuition has said would make it happy by bringing up all of the things that might not be safe about it, emotionally, physically, mentally, all of it, all right? So that your ego speaks in very loopy speak. So it brings back the same thing over and over again. It's very, it triggers a lot of emotion because one of its job is, jobs is to protect you from emotional pain. So it will trigger it. Um, you'll see and visualize scenarios. You know, if, if the thing that you're, um, you, the decision that you're making, let's use the cats when leaving the cats. If, if that felt like the right answer to do that, your ego would respond with making you feel guilt and shame and bad and these scenarios where, I don't know, the cats come back and attack you later, telling you that you're a jerk. That's what your ego does, all right? And its job is to trigger that in you so that you deal with it before you fully move forward. But what we do is we allow that to all be truth. And then we allow that to make our decision for us instead of following what our intuition did. So that's just kind of a quick guide of how to understand. I try to say yes to my whatever my intuition says as fast as I can before my ego gets a hold of it. And then once I've committed to it, I bring in what my ego has to say and I use it, I take it into consideration and I use it as part of um, how I make my plan to get to what my intuition said. I, I respect all of the things that my ego says, but it's not my decision maker, all right? Um, let's see, two more questions here. I find myself envisioning terrible things happening all the time. Bombs going off, someone in the room collapses and has a seizure. When I'm driving, I imagine terrible car crashes. Sometimes I'm part of it, sometimes I'm not. None of these things have ever actually happened. They're so vivid when I see them. Great question. So this is because your ego is um, very much in control of what's going on. You've given your um, power over to your ego. So your ego's job is to constantly show you fears and what could go wrong. Um, the power inside of you, your own feelings of power of keeping yourself safe and happy and enjoying your life and having a purpose has been checked to the back. All right, and so that happens because something happens in your life, I, I won't say what, um, that you stopped trusting that, that you felt like it wasn't safe, and then it was reinforced to you um, by by the people around you that, that that unfortunately was true. So when you're starting to see that stuff, the best thing that you can you can do and know is that remind yourself none of it's real, none of that has happened. Your intuition will never um, scare you into guidance. So as I'll just use this as an example, because I just think everyone can relate, even if you're not a mom, if you wake up in the middle of the night 
and you suddenly see in your head, you know, this, this scenario of your child, like not breathing in their bed and you like, <sighs> that is your ego. That's fear. That's not intuition. Intuition doesn't work like that. If you wake up in the middle of the night with just the urge to walk into your child's room and look at them without seeing scenario, without knowing what you're seeing, but you just know to go do that, that's intuition. All right. And when that happens, especially if it's the middle of the night, you're probably halfway to the room before you even bring that into your ego in your mind. Okay. So that's just a great way to kind of see the difference there, but just know it's, it's ego and you can do lots of things. Um, sometimes trauma in your life will cause you to overdo that. You'll stick to that because you feel like there was some place in your life where you made a mistake and you weren't looking at those dangers and then something painful happened to you. Um, so you can do lots of things to help move through that. Um, seeing a therapist is a great way. I can help it in some respects with that. Um, sometimes I send people to a therapist to work through it and then to come to me depending on where you are in handling that. Um, but working through that is, is very important and undoing that idea that you need to do that to, can, to be safe. Um, is is the trick there. And you can do things like EMDR is very helpful to, to do with a therapist. Um, I can recommend people if you're local. Um, and that, that really, really helps. Um, hopefully that answers that. Megan says, to the person that left, that's to the person that left, that's one of the hardest things you can do, sending so much love to you. Yes, yes, absolutely. Agreed, agreed. Uh, all right, so the last question here is, can you use angel cards too much and get incorrect readings from that? Yes, you can. <laughs> um, but let me explain because you can't really use them too much in the sense that you ask like 30 different questions and pull 30 different angel cards. Totally fine. But you can pull too many angel cards for the same issue and confuse yourself. <laughs> you can absolutely do that. People do that all the time. They'll call me because they're confused because they pulled 20 angel cards for the same question and they're telling them all different things. Don't do that. Pull a maximum of three angel cards for every question or every issue that you're going through. Beyond that is just confusing. All right. So you can, yes, if you are getting confusing messages, consult someone else. It's much easier for someone else to look at your angel cards and understand them than for you to look at your own. All right. I pull angel cards every day, all the time. And I still consult other people if I'm not sure, because we, we take it in and we, we are emotionally tied to, to the answers. Okay. So just pull a maximum of three cards about one issue. If you want more and more answers, that's fine. But just wait a week or two and then pull some more about the same subject or be more specific about the question and pull one card for something more specific. Um, chances are though, like if, if the cards are all over the place with your question, your angels are having trouble understanding what you're actually asking. Um, because when you are in the flow and you're open, you're asking in a way where you're not super ho holding on tight to the results, you'll be flabbergasted by all the cards and signs that come in. They're all really supporting and saying the same thing. All right. All right. Thanks for coming to the Heavenly Help Desk, guys. I, I hope this helps. Keep sending in your questions. I, I love answering them. It makes me happy. And um, go have a, a great rest of your day. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for being here.